Hello everyone and welcome back to the Strategizer where we take looks at all things strategy and strategically based. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing and showcasing Captain Marvel, um, a new hero from the Marvel Dice Run expansion uh, to Dice Run. Uh, so, um, she comes in a box with only Black Panther. She is in one of the two hero boxes. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, let's take a look at her. Uh, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more, uh, if you want to see more, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming out. The next review will be on Black Widow, so stay on the lookout for that. But that's not our video now. We are looking at Captain Marvel, so let's look at her. Here we got Captain Marvel. Let's unbox her. She is in the yellow crate. Okay, let's first take a look at her sass effects. <clears throat> Cosmic Ray. Unique sass effects. Stack limit 2. Roll 2 dice and pick 1 for damage bonus. After attacking, a player with this token may spend it and roll 2 dice. Then choose 1 of the 2 dice to add and add the value of the dice to the damage total. Attack. It's an attack modifier. Can only be spent. Can only spend one per turn, and cannot be spent the turn it's gained, and cannot be removed or transferred by any means. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two dice, you're gonna roll them, and then you're going to choose the better option to do added damage, one and three. It would be great if one of them's a six or a five because that's a ton of damage to add with just one stat effect. <clears throat> okay, then we have Cosmic Flare. It's a positive stat effect, stack limit of 3, deal 1 damage per token to all opponents. During their upkeep phase, a player with this token deals 1 undefendable damage per Cosmic Flare to all opponents, then remove one of these tokens. So you have 1, 2, or 3, depending on how, much da uh, depending on how many you have, and you'll then do 1, 2, or 3 damage. But you have to remove after one every turn. So it's not persistent status effect, which would make her a bit more overpowered. But you don't have to remove them all, just one per turn. Radiance, positive status effect, stack limit two. Change a die to a six during defense. A player with this token may spend it to change the value of any die rolled as part of the roll attempt during their defensive roll phase to a six. That is very helpful for Captain Marvel specifically, and you'll see that in a moment. Oh, and let me just show you her symbols. We have Photon on 1, 2, and 3, Ascend on 4 and 5, and, si and Hollow Star on 6. Standard setup of 3 symbols, 2 symbols, 1 symbol. Okay, let's start with her defensive roll so that you understand that a bit better. Energy Refraction. Roll 4 dice, deal 1 damage per Hollow Star, prevent 1 damage per Hollow Star, and for every 2 Ascend, rolled gain cosmic flare so first off photon's going to give you nothing so you don't want photons second off that's why radiance is so helpful because you get to prevent a damage and deal a damage for every six you roll let's say you have those two uh two radiances and you roll zero sixes you could be turning zero damage to two damage and two prevention or if you roll two then you'll get the max and you'll get and, and you have two and you have two radiance then you could do four damage and four prevention that's a very good situation all right, but let's move on from that. We have Photon Punch. It is your standard three of the simple, uh, three of the most common symbol, four of the most common symbol, five of the most common symbol. We deal five defendable damage, deal six defendable damage, and then deal seven defendable damage, and on four of a kind, gain Cosmic Flare, just making it a bit better if you can get something like that. Then we have Inner Light. You gain Radiance. Like we said, very good. You need two Photons and two Hollow Stars. You gain Radiance and then deal four pure damage, meaning that Cosmic Rays cannot help that because pure damage cannot be enhanced in any way or uh, modified. Barrel Roll. You deal six defendable damage. Oh, by the way, you need one Photon and three Ascend. So you deal six defendable damage and roll two dice. On Photon, add two defendable damage. Gain one percent Cosmic Flare. And on Hallstar, gain Cosmic Ray. Um, now remember, we have Ons and Purs. So if you rolled two Photons, you'd still only add two damage. However, if you rolled two Sends, you'd get a you get two Cosmic Flares. And once again, with Cosmic Ray, it cannot be spent the turn it is gained. So you will not be um, so you will not be able to use it for that move right then. 
Aurora Wave, two Photon, one Ascend, two Holostar. Gain Cosmic Ray, deal two damage, then deal damage equal to the total roll value. A basic easy move, by the way, that's going to be defendable damage. When it's one of those rolls and equal to or something like that, once again, you cannot use the Cosmic Ray there. All right, then we have the short straight for this photo, photonic. You gain radiance and deal seven defendable damage. Pretty good. Then we have the large straight where you gain cosmic ray and deal seven undefendable damage. Once again, pretty good, but now it's undefendable, so it's better. Once again, cosmic ray cannot be spent. Supernova. Gain cosmic for Holostar. It's your penultimate or subultimate, whatever you want to call it. Gain cosmic ray, radiance, and two cosmic flare. Deal 5 undefendable damage. Pretty good all around. You got a bunch of status effects. The ultimate is Binary Blast, 5 Holostar. You gain Cosmic Ray, Radiance, and 2 Cosmic Flare. Deal 12 undefendable damage. Once again, cannot use the Cosmic Ray on that. By the way, her quote is higher, further, faster. So, um, I'm just going to talk to you about a, um, a, some design choices, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about some design choices right here. So let's get into that. So first off, we have the dice. As I've been saying over and over, if you've been keeping up with this review series, these are specially styled for the Kickstarter, or maybe not, but I'm pretty sure it's the Kickstarter exclusive styled dice. As you can see, it's pretty wavy there, and it's for all five dice. Um... Then just going to show off what Cosmic Flare looks like. It's basically the exact shape they've been showing. It's kind of weird shaped. And then for the combat points, Captain Marvel's looking off, uh, looking off ready to go, like, punch. And here she, and for her health dial, she's just gone, like, at light speed and gone, like, super fast to show up here. And is getting ready to, like, do a giant fight or, like, just looking at someone. Not really sure. It's hard to tell what they're doing there. All right, I'm going to highlight a few cards, and then I will tell you my thoughts. All right, let's start with a Anytime card. It is called Scintillate. I think it's pronounced Scintillate. Tell me in the comments if you think it has a different pronunciation. Zero CP. Discard any number of radiance. Remember, you will have two as your stack limit. To, um, then prevent three damage per token discard. Pretty good, because even if you only have one, three damage is a good amount to prevent. And also the fact that if you have two, you'll be preventing six. It's a free version of, um, the classic card, um, where you, I'm pretty sure it's called Not This Time or something, uh, but, like, you can dodge the da uh, a bunch of damage, uh, pr easily. So, it's a, it's a good card to have, and using your radiances in different ways. Um, so, now we have this upgrade card that I'd like to show off. It's Light Torpedo 2, and I'm pretty interested in Light Torpedo 2. You get to deal, it's the large straight upgrade. It's 2 CP main phase card, deal 7 undefendable damage, gain Cosmic Ray, this token may be spent to turn its gain. It's a way to get around it when using Light Torpedo that you can use the Cosmic Ray you get on this turn, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, Skyward comes with it. It's two photons, two ascends, and you gain two gains. Pretty good. Alright, this is our promo card that you can get separately, or it's going to come with your Kickstarter. Uh, it's a zero CP main phase card. You roll one dice, um, and on the Holostar, you gain Cosmic Flare and Cosmic Ray, and on any other outcome, draw one card. Remember, even if you get this Cosmic, uh, Cosmic Ray with this card, it cannot be spent the turn it's gained. Okay. So, you will, like, even if you get a move, even if you get a move, you can't spend this Cosmic Ray because you still got on the turn. Um, on any other outcome, draw one card. Standard promo card setup. We have a few cards like this card here, Refuel. One CP main phase card, you roll one dice. On Photon, gain Cosmic Flare and draw a card. On Ascend, gain Radiance and draw one card. And on Hot Star, gain Cosmic Ray. Great way to get status effects. Remember, Cosmic Ray cannot be spent the turn it's gained. Another main phase card is Shine Bright. It's a zero CP main phase card. You spend up to three CP, then gain one Cosmic Flare per CP spent. Pretty good to get some damage on during your upkeep phase. It's just more damage you can add, and it's a very good card to that, especially since it doesn't cost anything. <clears throat> then we have Cosmic Shield, zero CP roll phase card. Another one of those cards that gets you status effects with rolls. Play only after being attacked. You roll one dice, and on Photon, prevent two damage. 
on Ascend, gain Cosmic Flare, and on Photon, and on Hollow Star, I mean, gain Cosmic Ray. Once again, Hollow Ray, um, Cosmic Ray cannot be spent to turn its game, but this is after being attacked, so that's probably not going to matter. So you got hope for that Cosmic Ray there. Alright, Supersonic is a way to get around all this Cosmic Ray shenanigans. A uh, 1 CP roll phase card, you may spend a Cosmic Ray, you gain this turn. It's an attack modifier. It doesn't modify anything with this card, but let's say you did an attack. You gained a Cosmic Ray for it, or you got it from a card earlier. You spend this card, and then you get to use your Cosmic Ray immediately. Pretty good. Especially since Cosmic Ray you get pretty often from cards and on Captain Marvel's board. And since the stack limit is only two, and you can only use it once per turn and not the turn it's spent, you may be getting Cosmic Rays and having to just not get them because you already have stack limit, which isn't great. Um, and yes, that is it for her cards, so let me give you a bit of my thoughts. Captain Marvel is a pretty good character, but feels like with all these crazy characters we're getting with this uh, brand new expansion, like Thor and Mjolnir, and then Loki with the illusions, and Doctor Strange with the spells, and Black Widow with her ability upgrades, like... It, they each seem to have a gimmick that is really good, and like, very interesting. And new to the game or enhancing things in the game. Well, Captain Marvel doesn't seem to have a gimmick. She just does damage. Like, sixes are good, but, like, that's not great for her. My thoughts on Captain Marvel is that she's a good character for Dice Throne. But we're in Marvel Dice right now where we have gotten so many very interesting and new characters that she just seems kind of boring. I don't know if I would get her and Black Panther's pack, because Black Panther, while he is interesting, he is very simple and easy. You'll learn more about that when I do his review. Um, stay tuned for that, though. Notification bell and subscribe. Um, but honestly, Captain Marvel just didn't feel right. She feels like a season one, um, or even season two, because there were some basic ones there, and that's more reasonable when it's just a game. But, like, she's just too boring to be in this new Marvel dice run. Like, all these characters I've seen are so interesting, and then here she is with just a few basic aspects. So, I'm gonna say, if you like Captain Marvel, get her. If you like just a basic character, get her. I mean, she is only difficulty level two. And it, there are two other difficulty level twos, but at least they're interesting. Black Panther's cool, but honestly, just for how boring Captain Marvel is, I don't think I'd get her. So she gets my seal of disapproval. Um, so yeah, that is my review. Captain Marvel is fun and all, but I just don't feel like she fits in with all these awesome gimmicks and playing styles we've been getting. And I just don't really like it or enjoy it, but it's... It's still fun. That's what I'm going to say. If you enjoy the character, or you're going to collect everything, or you just don't care and you just want a simple character, then get her. She's perfect for that. But for someone that's a seasoned Dice Throne player like me, who has all the original Dice Throne boxes and got Marvel Dice Throne from the Kickstarter immediately when they first found out, this was kind of a letdown, especially after playing all those other characters. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Remember, the Black Widow review is coming up. And here's a little hint for that video. I'm going to have a lot more nicer things to say about her. I think she may be my favorite character from the entire season. I've already played through all the characters, so I'm pretty confident I can say that. All right, but uh, see you next time. Here's the back if you want to see it. It is a spaceship in space, and here she is, lighting it all up. Very nice artwork. Um, Yeah, all right, see you next time. Bye!